Hello everyone. In my previous presentation, I discussed the definition, the rationale, and the methods of developing research questions. This presentation is about the what, why, and how of research hypothesis. In other words, we will briefly discuss what is a research hypothesis, why do we need to have research hypotheses in our research studies, and how are the ways in which we develop research hypotheses and what are different types of research hypotheses. So first of all, let us begin with the definition of a research hypothesis. A research hypothesis is basically a tentative explanation or prediction or proposition formulated for testing or exploring empirically. So, um, as we know that in social sciences and in generally in all sciences, what happens is that we have certain tentative explanations or predictions about certain social or natural phenomena. And so those tentative explanations or predictions or propositions related to these social phenomena in the social science context um, can be considered as a research hypothesis. So research hypotheses are generally based on assumed relationships between variables in a research study. As we know that generally we have certain social phenomena represented by certain variables that we uh, want to explore in our research studies. So those assumptions actually lead to research hypotheses. So in other words, hypotheses state the assumed relationship between independent and dependent variables before the actual existence or otherwise of this relationship um, is empirically established in a research study. This is also called a, an educated guess. So hypotheses, especially uh, hypotheses are associated with quantitative research and with positivist paradigms of research. And in this type of research, we generally have variables that are independent variables and we have variables that are dependent variables. In other words, the dependent variable actually change independent variables depend on bringing changes in the independent variables. And so, but before practically experimentally doing that, we have certain educated guess related to the relationship between these two variables. And that guess, that educated guess is basically based on the assumed relationships that we call hypothesis. So a simple example of a hypothesis is given here. Socioeconomic status of students affects their self-esteem. Here, socioeconomic status is the independent variable, while self-esteem of the students is the dependent variable. So, it is assumed uh, that socioeconomic status of the students affect their self-esteem. Similarly, another one is, there is significant relationship between teachers' teaching styles and students' classroom participation. So again, you see an independent or an, an dependent variable, and there is an assumed relationship between these two, which we term as the hypothesis. Now we move on further um, and discuss some other aspects related to hypothesis. Hypotheses could be accepted or rejected once empirical studies have been conducted. So as we say that hypotheses are educated guesses, and that actually means that, that the statements um, that we consider as hypotheses are not essentially true or false. We can 
get to those conclusions on the basis of our empirical studies. So again, acceptance or rejection of research hypotheses have no bearing on the value of the research project. It is not essential that your research hypothesis must be accepted or must be rejected. Uh, whatever is the result or the outcome, the value of the hypothesis is still intact. Then good hypotheses generally should indicate relationship between variables clearly. So there should be no ambiguity in terms of the way hypotheses are presented in research studies. Again, good hypotheses should be in precise language, scientific language. Um, and the next important thing is that good hypotheses should be representative of the research objectives. In many cases, um, I have seen that research students develop research hypotheses that are not representative, um, that, that are actually not representing the topic that they are actually dis, uh, exploring. And so good hypotheses should be representative of the research objectives and the research topic. Then good hypotheses should be testable empirically. We should not develop hypotheses or come up with hypotheses that cannot be tested empirically. Now, the next question is, why is it that we need research hypotheses? Well, um, research hypotheses are important in research studies, um, not in all types of studies, but especially empirical and, and more especially in quantitative and uh, experimental studies, hypotheses are very important. So generally we have hypotheses in all sorts of social science researches, but they are more clearly stated and more visible in uh, more quantitative experimental type of studies in comparison to other studies, such as maybe more exploratory or qualitative research studies. So the reason for um, um, having hypotheses in our studies is that hypotheses give clear focus and direction to the research process. Then generally the researcher, the, uh, uh, the hypotheses actually require the researcher to do sufficient reading and reflection around the topic before formulating and, re and refining hypotheses. And this is a very useful thing. Before embarking on the practical research, during the process of development of hypothesis or hypotheses, the researcher um, gets into formal reading around and reflection around the research topic. And that actually not only helps in developing the hypothesis, but also helps the researcher in getting insights, better insights into the research topic before formally exploring it. Then it also gives tentative answers to our research questions and that actually helps us in getting into the right direction in exploring the research, uh, the research issue. Then it also helps in giving direction to the process of data collection analysis and interpretation. So you can see that uh, a hypothesis or hypotheses play a very central role in the research process. Now we move on to the how of it and actually this uh, mean that what actually is involved in the process of development of research hypotheses. Well, there, is an, there are certain initial questions and there are always initial questions before the, the formal uh, process of research. Those research question lead, questions lead to reading and to actually literature review, which further leads to the formulation of our hypothesis or hypotheses. So there could be one hypothesis or a number of hypotheses. Then on further reflection and discussion and peer review, 
um, we can refine the hypothesis that we have developed, initially developed for our research. And then the other important aspect of it is that generally uh, towards the end of the research process, the hypothesis um, ha has to be either rejected or accepted as a result of the research process. Uh, then the how question also revolves around the different types of hypotheses. So different types of hypotheses have been identified and these include descriptive hypotheses. These are hypotheses that state the existing state or form or nature of something. So how or in what state something, some social phenomena is. For example, corporal punishment is prevalent in schools. Now this shows the state of this particular phenomena, corporal punishment, whether it is or it is not. Relational hypothesis, um, these are hypotheses that state relationship or causation between variables. So, in other words, there's, there are two types of uh, relational hypotheses. One shows relationship between variables and the other shows causation, which actually means that one variable or variables, one type of variables might be the cause of another type of variable or variables. So, an example of relationship is uh, correlational uh, hypothesis is this one. Female students' academic achievement is better in social science subjects than male students. And then, and here you see that uh, the researcher actually wants, maybe wants to establish a relationship between gender and academic achievement. And in the second one, example of causation, parental involvement enhances students' academic achievement. So here you see two variables, parental involvement and student's academic achievement. And one is presented as the possible cause of the other one. So this is the, an example of the causation type of hypothesis. Then the how also further have some other examples, uh, some other types, and these include Simple hypothesis, so what is a simple hypothesis? A hypothesis based on the relationship, which is actually cause-effect relationship of two variables, an independent variable and a dependent variable, is called simple hypothesis. So here, in simple hypothesis, there are two variables. One is the independent and the other one is the dependent variable. And a simple example of this type of hypothesis could be this one. Corporal punishment affects the mental health of students. So here you see corporal punishment is one variable, the independent one, and mental health, the dependent one. And so establishing a relationship between these two um, is reflected in this particular hypothesis. Then the complex hypothesis, relationships cause and effect among multiple variables, independent and dependent. So if there are more than one <clears throat> independent and dependent variables, establishing or guessing a relationship between these two um, uh, types of variables, which are more than one, will be an example of complex hypothesis. And so uh, an example of this one could be Corporal punishment affects the mental health of students, which results in the poor academic, in their poor academic performance. So as you can see, that there is this one independent variable, and then there is the dependent variable, and then there is another dependent variable. And so you can have more than one dependent and independent variables. And as the relationship becomes more complex, so you can say, you can see that the name complex hypothesis. We now move on to the, um, some other categorization of the research hypotheses. And 
The two further categorization of research hypotheses include the, uh, no, the, the null hypothesis. So what is a null hypothesis? This type of hypothesis assumes that there is no significant relation between variables, uh, which is dependent variable, and IV means independent variable, or that change in one variable is not the effect of another variable or change in another variable. This type of um, uh, hypothesis, the null hypothesis, is denoted by H0 or HO. Example, corporal punishment does not affect the mental health of students. Now, this is an example of a null hypothesis, or there is no significant relationship between corporal punishment and students' mental health. Again, um, we are arguing that there is no relationship, no significant relationship. And so, indication of no significant relationship between variables is something that is represented in the null hypothesis. Towards the end of this presentation, we will also discuss the alternative hypothesis, which is something the, like the very opposite of the null hypothesis. So, what is alternative hypothesis? This type of hypothesis assumed, assumes that there is significant relationship between variables, that is the dependent variable and the independent variable, or that one variable, the dependent variable, is the consequence of another variable, uh, the independent variable. This one is denoted by H1. And examples of, non, of, of these include two types of uh, the alternative hypothesis. One is called the non-directional non hypothesis, where there is significant relationship between corporal punishment. Uh, example of it is actually that there is significant relationship between corporal punishment and mental health of students. And then corporal punishment affects students' mental health. So this type of relation, this type of, uh, of topics um, or this type of hypotheses will actually be considered as the non-directional because we do not know the direction um, in which variables actually re relate with each other or in, in which one variable actually affects the other one. So that direction is not known and so they are called non-directional. Directional, on the other hand, um, not only tells us about the possible relationship of variables, but also the direction in which that particular effect takes place. So, for example, there is significantly positive relationship between corporal punishment and mental health of students. Now, that says that is an example of the directional hypothesis. Also, corporal punishment negatively affects students' mental health. And again, this shows us the direction. It, it, it's not just the effect. Um, we are not just saying the corporal punishment affects students' mental health, but we, all, we are also um, assuming the direction, which here is that it is negatively affecting the mental health. So this was a, a brief general uh, introduction to what the hypothesis is, why do we need hypotheses in our research studies, and what are some of the types of research hypothesis.